How's it everyone? So we've come through a whole transformation journey and I really pray that you've had an amazing journey so far. We've got one week left, just this week. And um, I want to encourage you guys to maybe consider continuing. If you just came to connect with a small group, to continue with that small group, to stay in fellowship and maybe try and um, keep it up until next year when we do our next 40 day journey. Anyway, that aside, <clears throat> tonight I want to speak about transformed in our vocational health. Um, our work makes up such a big part of our lives and for many of us, work is a drag. And, um, and we, we start off, we go and study, we go and go to our first job with these great aspirations that somehow we'll make a contribution to society. But then somehow we kind of lose, lose traction in the whole thing. So tonight I want, to, want us to have a look at that. And Jesus had this to say about, about work. For some of us, work is about getting a, getting a good income. But this is what Jesus had to say in Matthew 16 verse 26. What good would it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Um, what you become in your work is far more important to God than what you do. Um, so whether you are working to get money or, or whether you are working to achieve this big goal in your life where you will find meaning and significance, God is not so much interested about any of that. God is more concerned about who you become than what He is about what you do. So what does the Bible say about how we should perform our work? And there are a few pointers in Scripture that I just want us to, to go to. The first one is, I need to work enthusiastically wherever I am. It doesn't matter if you hate your work or love your work or whether you want to quit. God wants you to be enthusiastic about what you do. Um, you have to stop waiting for that dream job to come. There's many of us who kind of, we're in a job, but we're dreaming about the next job, or the next thing that we're going to do. Listen to what it says in Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Um, it doesn't say when you like to do it. Um, but it does say, do it with all your heart. And it's a command. If you go to the original language there, it's, a, it's, it's in the imperative. And... And so, kind of what that says is that whatever we do, whether it's in the church or whether it's at home or whether it's at work, we need to do it with all the enthusiasm that we can muster. Now, to be enthusiastic, we need to remember three things. The first one is, the job that we have is a test from God. We spoke a little bit about that two weeks ago. Listen to what it says in, in the Word. If you are faithful in the little things, God will give you bigger things to do. Luke 16 verse 10. He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in, ver in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? God simply says this, I want you to be doing the bigger things in life, but can I trust you with the little things? Simple as that, we're not going to expand anymore. The second thing that we need to um, remember when we think about being, being enthusiastic is this, God is watching to see what your attitude is in the work that you do now. Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15 and he has this to say. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Do your best to present yourself as someone who is approved. God is watching. He's wanting to see what our attitude is. No matter what the circumstances, but what our attitude is. Okay. Third thing to remember is my attitude determines my joy. Let me say it again. My attitude determines my joy. Here's a question. Does complaining ever make the work better? Or does going to work in a bad mood 
make the work any better? Does um, bottling up any frustration inside of you make the work any better? No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. So this is what God says through Solomon who wrote this proverb. He said this in Proverbs 12 verse 34. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Um, in Romans 12 verse 11 we read this. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Okay, so those are the three things to remember. This job that you have, the one that you're in now, is a test from God. God wants to see what your attitude is. And thirdly, um, your attitude can determine whether you enjoy the work or not. It determines your joy. Okay. Second thing that the Word of God says about, about our work is this. I must understand who I'm really working for. You are not working for the bank. Or you are not working for an individual. You are not working for wherever you are working. And you are working for God. Colossians 2 verse 23 puts it like this. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. You work for the Lord and He, will reserve, he, will, he is the one who will reward you. No matter what your circumstances at work, um, this is what you must remember. You are not doing this for the guy who is filling in your form at the end of the year or that you have an evaluation with every few months or so. I mean, you, you are working to put a smile on God's face. Now this should change your whole attitude towards work. And um, Any job can become pleasant if you know that you are doing it for the Lord, not for the guy who is being very difficult at work. Okay, second thing. Third thing. I must concentrate on building my character. I've already said this. God is more concerned about who you are becoming, transforming you, than what He is about what you are doing for Him. So how does that, how does that frame your thinking? God wants you <laughs> to become the best person that He created you to be. And He will use your work to shape that in you. Now you can either reject this character building time, or you can embrace it and become the person that God wants you to have, wants you to be. Number four, I need to be, I need to care about the people that I work with. Now I know that this is sometimes difficult because people around us do stupid things. If only all of them could be like we are, just joking. But just, just imagine that. Um, if only all of them could think like we do. But God didn't create everyone like that. And so sometimes people will irritate us. Sometimes they will annoy us. Sometimes they will humiliate us. But here's the thing that, that makes us as Christians different to the people who don't have Christ in their life. We do everything in love. I mean, that's what life is all about, the Bible tells us. We should be inspired to love people no matter who they are. In Philippians 2 verse 3 we read this, do, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Um, and you know what, this doesn't have to be hard. Um, you know, some people you never, you just, you're just not going to satisfy some people. They're always going to have that other thing that you need to do. But just imagine being the person at work who goes and stands next to a colleague who's just lost, lost their job, hand on the shoulder, saying, I'm praying for you. Or the person who, as Dave Cree Brown um, told us two weeks ago, to pray for another colleague who's got cancer. I mean, just go to that person and say, I want you to know you're not alone. I've spoken to our Heavenly Father about you. Um, there, there are so many little ways in which we can show love without being soppy about it, but so that people really know that they are valued and cared for by God's people, first of all, but most of all, by their Creator God. You are representative. So um, just think about it in that way. In Ephesians 2, verse, sorry, in Ephesians 4, verse 2, we read this. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. If you want to succeed at work, you need to care about people. 
And, and sometimes that means a bit of an attitude change from you. To be humble and gentle and patient and bearing with other people. Knowing that sometimes they will have to bear with you. Point number five. I need to exceed in what is expected of me. Some people excel in doing the minimum. Um, it's not that they're not doing their work, but that's it. Um, <laughs> you know, when I was working for um, a, te a telecommunication company, um, I, I used to remember getting to tea time and be busy with installing high frequency equipment. And there was one person that was working with us. He would go, that's it. Slap his hands together and he just walk off. No matter where we were in the middle of testing or whether we would have to start all over again if we stopped. For him, tea time was tea time. And according to the law, he was right. But man, it frustrated the rest of us. Now as Christians, that we're not there to frustrate people, people like this. Listen to what it says in Colossians 3 verse 22 to 24. Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. This is in the message translation. Work from the heart for your real master, for God. Confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The sullen servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of, of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. Um, I challenge you to go and read it again in the message, but it simply means this. If you're a holy, devoted follower of Christ, you're not going to do, do just enough. You're going to do way more because, because you are not doing it for yourself. Now, if you do this, you will succeed. Always do more than the minimum. This is the kind of work that God says that He will bless. Most people want to get by with the minimum. Um, but you know, amongst people like that, it would be easy for you to stand out if you just do a little bit more. And so if you want to stand out at work and be noticed, well, be that person who does your work with all of your heart. Um, as children of the King of Kings, we should be standing out. Okay, number six. I must expand my skills with continued learning. Never stop learning. We need to continue to learn for the rest of our lives. The world is constantly changing, and I think it's become, it's become even rapidly, more rapidly so than 10 years ago. And we need to do our best as Christians to live in this world and understand this world. In Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10, we read this, If the axe is dull and the edge is unsharpened, more strength is needed, but, but skill will bring success. So if you want to, if you want to succeed in life, um, you need to work smarter and not necessarily harder. For this to happen, you need to take more time to sharpen the axe. To be sharp, to be able to do things in a shorter period of time. Um, if you are struggling at work, um, then you have a suggestion. Why not start working on yourself? Always ask yourself halfway through the year, am I a little bit better than what I was beginning of the year? Do I understand the work better? Um, do I understand my environment better? Do do I function better as a team? And so those are the things that you need to think about. But how, how will you sharpen your axe? And so I just have a few suggestions. The first one is actually coming to church. By that I don't mean coming to church and just let it be a gathering, but actually coming to church when all of God's people come together and ask the Holy Spirit when all the, the, all the saints come together to worship to reveal something to you, to show you how to think about certain things. And as we unpack scripture together for you to get a new way of thinking about your work, about your environment, to understand it better. Um, through reading, I mean, I mean, we have to read. And, and you don't have to sit with a book these days to read. I know some of you um, bookworms out there don't necessarily like all the changes, but we have, at the press of a button, we have the world's knowledge at our hand. So download some books on your Kindle or on your cell phone. You can download a Kindle um, app, whatever it is. Um, go on the internet, read, read, read. Fill your mind with, with knowledge. 
Uh, never before in the, in the history of mankind has knowledge been so attainable as today. Um, uh, you can sharpen your axe by meeting with your small group. Um, I think again of that proverb that says, as iron sharpens iron, show, so one man sharpens another. Uh, I can't, you can't sharpen yourself on your own. You need other significant people in your life. Which is why I want to encourage you to continue in your small groups. Or if your small group isn't a complete fit for you, go to another one. But don't walk the road alone. Let other people challenge you. Okay. And then extra courses. In, I mean, nothing stops you from, from enlisting. I mean, you can go onto um, YouTube now and learn about all kinds of things. There's tutorials on all kinds of subjects. But it starts with you deciding that that's what you want. Okay, last one. I need to dedicate my work to be used for God's purposes. Proverbs 16 verse 3, we read this. Commit your, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. How do you commit your work to the Lord? But simply like this. To actually go on your knees. To... Um, Kneel next to your bed or at a chair or something and open your hands and say, God, my gifts, my abilities, everything that I have, I give it to you. And God, I ask that you will use it to extend your kingdom, to bring your glory to earth. Um, one of the elders works for ESCOM. Now, ESCOM isn't the most, most love company in the country at the moment but it's the one that we can't do without and when we spoke at the end of last year I was so challenged by what Dion said to me Dion said you know Rian the reason I'm still at ESCOM is because I believe there are few of us Christians in senior management that that, that is helping to carry the place and taking it to take it through this difficult period now that's the way to think about your work whether you or a teller at the local spa, or whether you are a mechanic, or wherever you are, you've got to understand God doesn't just work in the church, He's working in society as a whole. And whenever God's people are at their best, and they understand that what they do brings about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is like yeast. It, it kind of evolves out, it, it, it goes into the nooks and crannies of society. And that is why you are gifted in the way that you are. That is why you have give, been given the ability to do the work that you do. So, when you go to work tomorrow morning, say to God, God, today is another day at work. I want to commit my work, my environment to you. Let me be the one who brings your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In conclusion, I just want to read the passage that I read on Vision, Vision Sunday. Um, and remind you about it. 2 Corinthians 5.20 We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making His appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Think of that first part of the verse. We are therefore Christ's ambassador. Do you ever think that you're an, an ambassador? Um, actually, every day you drive off to work, you should have diplomatic number plates in your car. And when people ask you, why you should say, I am an ambassador of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The only true kingdom. You are Christ's ambassador. At work, by the quality of your work, you are Christ's ambassador. By the way that you love people at work, you are Christ's ambassador. So, let me pray for you guys as we bring this whole Transform series to a close. Lord, you have gifted us in a book and helped us as human beings to participate in society and make a contribution. We are not here for our own, Lord. We are here on a mission. Your mission. As Christ followers, Lord, we are here to bring about your kingdom on earth. Help each one of us to understand that first and foremost, Lord. And Lord, will you give us the strength, the emotional and physical strength, that no matter what our circumstances, that we will be able to do our work with all of our hearts. And Lord, help us to be the people who bring 
hope and joy into the lives of other people by the way that we carry ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that you never ask us to do something that's bigger than what we can carry, even though we may feel desperate at times. So I commit this to you in Jesus' name. Commit everyone to you in Jesus' name. May our church be a church that goes out there and bring about your kingdom. In your name. Amen.